Daily drive your fun car. What does that mean? Well, what makes a car a good daily driver? Is it the streetability of a car? Because most of these cars could be driven on the street. Technically, you could drive any car on the street. But if I had a nickel for every time that somebody told me that their race car was a street car, I would probably have a lot of nickels. But just because you can drive crazy cars on the street as daily drivers, doesn't mean you should. I do think that daily drivers shouldn't be boring either. There's a sweet spot between these crazy modified cars and boring cars. When you think about a daily driver, you think about a boring vehicle, don't you? You think of all the cars that you see when you drive down the highway, the standard four-door sedans in some gray-toned color. Well, what is it about these cars that makes so many people want to buy them and drive them every day? Is it the gas mileage or the low cost of buying them or the reliability for low repair costs? It seems to me like what most people are interested in is just the low cost related to the vehicle. Cheap transportation seems to be the most desired. Even Tesla falls into that marketing strategy by making you think about all the money and gas that you'll be saving. Well, cost is certainly a huge factor in making a car a good daily driver, but is it the most important? According to AAA, your average American drives 51 minutes per day. That's 310 hours per year, with an average vehicle being owned for 8 years. That's a total of 2,480 hours spent in the vehicle that you choose to buy. It seems to me that the most important thing is making sure you buy a car that you actually enjoy, since you're going to be spending a lot of time with it. But with that logic, people might be looking for the most comfortable car as a daily driver. When I think about a car that I'm going to spend a lot of time with, I think about its comfort level. And while comfort is certainly an important factor, I think we might be missing the overall point of what makes a car a good daily driver. I think it's the fun that we can have with them on a daily basis. But we're losing touch with that. It seems like people care more about the economy and comfort level of a car rather than how much enjoyment they can get from them. But people are still buying sports cars. The Ford Mustang is the top sold sports car in 2022 so far with a total of 18,363 sales. Wait, 18,000 sales? That's nothing. What was the most sold vehicle overall? Oh, right, the F-150 with almost half a million sales. So why are so many people continuing to buy boring cars when they're spending so much time in them? Don't you want to have a little bit of fun? This is my 500 wheel horsepower STI, and it's my daily driver. It gets 17 miles per gallon on the highway, and around 14 around town. Maintenance cost isn't too cheap either. It needs an oil change every 3,000 miles, and tire replacements cost about a thousand bucks. It also costs a lot to purchase. The initial purchase price was $28,000. And after all the mods, well, let's not talk about that. Despite all this, I drive this car every day because it's my fun car. I don't want a boring car just because it's cheap and comfortable. I would rather pay more for gas or maintenance if it means that I get to enjoy driving. We spend too much time in our cars for them to be boring. So does this mean that we should all be daily driving our modified cars? Obviously not. Some cars make for absolutely terrible street cars. We saw this with Ben when he took the stripped out Evo 10 coast to coast. I think there's a sweet spot, a spot between boring cheap sedans and extreme modified cars. And I know what you're probably thinking now, what the heck Ben? Isn't Gears and Gasoline the channel that released a video about how everyone should drive a beater car? In this video we're going to be talking about beater cars and why you should all have one. Yes, but what Ben meant in that video was that driving a cheap car can be fun too because you can neglect them and not have to worry. But everyone's idea of fun is a little different. Some of you might think it's better to not own a beater car, for example, and to instead just own one fun car that you enjoy driving every day. I think you spend too much time in your car for it to be depressing. I also think owning a nice car and a beater car doesn't make financial sense when you could just own one fun car instead. Because now you're spending extra money on taxes, insurance, and maintenance on two cars. Even if the beater car is cheap to purchase and insure, it's still additional costs that I'd rather just put into one fun car. Okay, sure, I know what this looks like. The YouTuber with all these crazy cars are telling us that we should have crazy expensive cars because they're better. No, that's not what I'm saying. Fun does not mean expensive, and boring does not mean cheap. You could spend $100,000 on what I think is a boring car. 
or you could spend a few thousand on what I think is a really fun car. But what makes a fun car, and what makes a fun car a good daily driver? Well, I've put together a list of things that I think make up the perfect fun daily driver. 10 things that I look for in a daily driver. First and foremost, a little bit of horsepower. This feels pretty obvious to me, but nobody wants to be merging onto the highway and not have enough power to sneak in ahead of that semi-truck. Horsepower just makes a car easier to get around, easier to navigate traffic, and easier to get up to speed. I'm not talking about crazy power here though. I think between 2 and 400 horsepower is probably the sweet spot. A good handling car is often that fun factor that most people don't realize. What makes a car feel good is usually the handling how sharp the steering rack feels, how reactive the tires are, and how smooth and compliant a car is with bump steer. A good handling car can make or break the driving experience. There's plenty of high horsepower cars that just aren't fun to drive because of poor handling. If you live somewhere out in Texas, that might be less of a factor, but it still matters. Steering feel is the ultimate connection with a car and the road. And I'm not talking about just tires either. There's a lot that goes into making a good handling car. Obviously, practicality is important with a daily driver. I used to ride sport bikes around, but I often find myself heading back to cars because I needed to carry something large or even just didn't have a cup holder. Storage space is important. This is probably the number one reason that Luke likes his Ugh, fit so much. It just looks so good. Practicality is underrated with sports cars. Say what you will, but there's a reason that a lot of modern sports cars are hatchbacks. I like a car that's quiet and comfortable. Fun cars don't have to be loud and obnoxious. When you're driving a car across country, that can get old pretty quick. Your straight pipe VQ might be the reason that all your friends don't want to ride with you. A good sounding car can still be a quiet car. When it's something that you want to drive every day, that's probably what you want. This is the life. I should probably say something else besides how quiet this car is and how comfortable it is. That's all I can think about right now. Call me an old man, but I like living, and safety is important. Daily drivers see all sorts of crazy stuff on the road, and some things can be out of your control. I want a car that I know I will be safe in, so if I wreck it, I can live to buy another one. Make sure your car isn't too expensive for you, because if it is, you'll be constantly worried about putting miles on it or getting scratches on it. This is the biggest argument for beater cars, but I don't think that your car has to be worth $2 for it to be a car that you're not worried about. I like Dave Ramsey's method for making sure your car's value is about half of your income. I think that's a good starting point, but everyone's situation is different. Another good rule of thumb is making sure you have enough money to buy that car twice. That way, if you have any issues with the car, you can afford to fix it and not hate the car afterward. Fun cars don't have to be expensive. It's not a direct parallel. Don't buy a car that's outside your comfort zone, because even if it has all the right specs, you're never going to drive it because you're worried about breaking it or putting miles on it. Reliability is not as important, but it does still matter. It's nice to have a car that you don't have to worry about, but even if it's a car that's known to have issues, that's still okay. That can be a good learning experience if you have the time. My first car was very unreliable, but I still loved working on it and learning new things. To each their own. If you have a car that's not reliable, it's nice to have a car that's easy to work on. This is often overlooked as well, because some cars can be a complete nightmare to work on, and that's no fun for anyone. Coolant in the oil, common failure. Handful of other things, common failure. Pretty crazy timing chain setup. Four chains, nine gears. Oh, yeah. As you can see, VWs and Audis are not typically very easy to work on. Our friend Charles at the Humble Mechanic would probably be the first to tell you that. You might like the idea of being special and unique and having the only car of its kind in town, but that doesn't make for a very enjoyable daily driver. I tried to daily drive my RX-7 for a while, but it kept frustrating me when parts would break and I couldn't find any new replacements. It's very difficult to find parts for these cars, so it was actually easier for me to buy an entirely new car. I bought it just to take the interior out of and put into this car. That makes for quite a frustrating daily driver experience. So make sure your fun car is common enough that you can get parts easily. <laughs> the final factor is that X factor. This is something that you can't really quantify, but it trumps all the other factors. I think the best car for daily driving is the one that puts a smile on your face. It might be unpractical or loud or inefficient with fuel, but if it puts a smile on your face, that's what matters the most. Daily driving a boring car can make life boring. 
if you have a long day at work with a job that you hate, knowing that fun car is waiting for you in the parking lot to drive home might be all you need to push through the day. If you're at the grocery store and you're mad that eggs cost $7, that won't matter anymore when you're walking out to your car in the parking lot and just can't get over how good it looks. Or maybe you're just in a funk and you need some time to yourself. Grab your keys and just go for a drive. When you're out on a back road, all your worries seem to disappear. So, daily drive your fun car.